call to the Middleton City Hall and I'm going to call the meeting of Middleton Planning Commission for Tuesday, February 12, 2019 to order. And the first item on the agenda is the roll call. Paulson? Here. Reed? Here. Brower? Here. Ramsey? Here. Murray? Here. And Furtherhurt? Here. Six present. Hubbard is absent. All right. <coughs> So the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from 122nd. Move minutes. approval. Second. Any comments? All those in favor of the motion to approve the minutes say aye. 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 Anyone opposed to the motion? <coughs> unanimously. All right, we are on to exciting stuff here. It's specific implementation plan, modification, <coughs> exterior building improvements, 3225 Deming Bay. Aline, or who is taking it? The recommendation is for <coughs> approval, and they are here tonight. PPD uh, plans to occupy this building and increase employment. Uh, Bull McFarland from PPD is here, as well as his team. If you have any questions, um, but the recommendation is for approval. It's for some exterior changes, some a loading dock change, and some metal panels, and a few rooftop um, equipment. What's um, there now? Vestibule. It was the home of Extreme Engineering, I think. Oh, okay, yeah. And Extreme Engineering moved they downtown. Moved. <coughs> no. They moved to Madison. So, yeah, they moved to Madison. Oh, okay. <coughs> they moved to the <coughs> other city. Yeah, they moved to Madison. I think, yeah. Her so optics was in there as well. Yes. Okay. <coughs> and it's a very thorough submittal. Any, do you want to say anything? Are you guys uh, happy? So we've leased um, the entire building, 82,000. You have to use the mic for, oh. the, for the, the recording video. guy. Oh, okay, because I can talk loud enough. I don't need a mic. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. It doesn't amplify. It just records for the. Gotcha. So we've leased the entire 82,000 square foot building. Uh, we're going to develop about 50,000 square feet of that initially in phase one. Uh, that project will be complete. The first phase are actually going to be completed two different stages, one toward the end of this year with a specialty lab and then the other uh, the end of February of 2020. Uh, it's anticipated that between now and the end of 2020, this particular project is going to add about 250 new jobs inside the city of Middleton. Uh, after that, depending on business, and right now business is good, the remaining 30,000 square feet will probably develop later on in 20 and early 21 with enough space for another 150 employees. <coughs> so we're looking at pulling about 400 people, new people into that building over the next three years or so. So uh, what we normally like to do is we go in, we completely gut the place, we renovate, we, we're actually building specialty <coughs> laboratories in there to expand our capacities. And this particular application, um, just we want to clean up the outside a little bit, uh, give it a little bit better appearance on the outside. There are some, there, there's some items outside that I'll, I'll let Can my architect down? Rick Gilbertson get into with detail here. Uh, but um, we're just, photos. we just need the space to expand and, and we'd just like to do a few things for that building and that's why we're here to make sure that we uh, gain your approval before we crank it up. So it's mostly Actually, GMP then? Exterior photo. Yes. Okay. The, yep. the elevations. <coughs> okay. Any questions for Bob? Yes, Ben. Given the nature of the uh, lab operations, are there any special environmental permits that are needed? No, <coughs> sir. And will there be any um, hazardous materials or hazardous, hazardous waste stored on site? Uh, w I mean, we have our normal chemicals for lab operations, but anything that we put down the drain goes through acid neutralization before it hits the sanitary system. So we make sure that we have all of those permits covered before <coughs> any of that happens. Okay. We don't, we don't, there's nothing that gets emitted into the air. We, we're not, we're a research <coughs> firm. We're not manufacturing. So it, there's, what waste we do generate is, is either taken care of during a neutralization process or we have specialty disposal units to come in and take it off on a daily basis. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah, it's mostly <laughs> molecular biology in any case, right? A lot of uh, assays. Site plan of the aerial. Yes. Aero. Yeah. That's down. Yep. I'm David. There you go. You like so I'll turn it over to Rick and let okay. him talk about the specific the All right, Rick. of the application. Actually, I do have a question. <coughs> parcel um, North. East, right? The kind of blank parcel. That's 
That's east. That's east. Yes. Uh, we have also leased that parcel. Okay. So that's a potential part development. Right? Yeah. Well, what we have right now is there are 225 parking spaces assigned to 3225 Deming Way. When we put 400 people in that building, okay, we're going to need some adjacent parking. So at least a portion of that lot will be used to be able to put people into that building. What the other portion of that lot is, there's, you know, our plants could go any number of a half a dozen ways at this point. That's just a little bit further down the road than, than I can talk about right now. The, the the landscape plan shows street trees in the terrace, the tree lawn, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, they're all existing, right? I believe they are. Isn't that right? Correct. Yes. 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 Well, up one, up one, one more. Like, yeah, it looks right, one more. There. Yeah, it looks like they are. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah, we don't plan on touching any of that. <coughs> oh, I was hoping to get you to do some more. Put some <laughs> more. Not, not take some away, but to put some more in. Yeah, okay. I, I, I think it would be good if you coordinated mm -hmm. that with the... Um, the forester? For, city Forester, yes, that's what he's called. Uh-huh. You no, know, just, to, just to make sure that whatever's going in there um, or, or <coughs> could go in there or should go in there um, is thought about. Please. I can talk to Mark Wagner about that too. Yeah. I don't <coughs> think they're interested in um, planting more trees, I think. So maybe a good idea. So, yeah. Well, and certainly as the parcel develops to the east <coughs> with parking and other, you'd want an integrated mm -hmm. landscape plan. Oh, yeah. And but yeah, this is. When it ever came to that, certainly that would be integrated. Yeah, I think. I mean, PPD is such a good employer for the city this yes. is right you just you're not altering the site plan you're just altering the exterior correct yeah I and mean, just giving it a little bit more modern look than the way it does right now yeah yeah david is it is it is interesting there are so few trees in the terrace there for whatever reason so don't know what happened mm -hmm. all right i'm wondering well, any other, any i've other. got a question for the architect so maybe i'll wait okay Okay, well, you can ask the architect will stand up okay. and answer. So. Um, I'm curious about the <coughs> exterior finishing system, the new additions, how you're attaching that to the building and, and um, sort of your goal with the facade. Sure. Um, you know, the building's 20 plus years old, so some of the exterior materials are um, certainly a little tired. A um, little dated, you know, a lot of color was used back then. Uh, one of the reasons a lot of color was used, we believe, on this too, is it was set up to be a multi-tenant building, so they wanted it to really look like a bunch of separate little buildings. Uh, so the goal here is to kind of clean it up, maybe do a little more subtle, more uniform color palette that represents maybe a single tenant. Um, the amount of renovations or additions is just a, a vestibule that gives it more of a front door. Uh, and we did use... Uh, <coughs> We're proposing a dark bronze metal panel there that relates to the window framing <coughs> and makes it stand out a little bit more from the rest of the building so visitors to the site can kind of figure out where the front door is. Um, so it's pretty limited other than kind of freshening the building up and making the color palette a little more current. <coughs> what we're doing. Related to the site piece, um, other than a little curb rework around the vestibule and taking one of the docks that's recessed and making it at grade for functional purposes. Uh, we're also going to screen uh, the mechanical equipment at grade, which there's already some there. So we're just, we, we think from a security standpoint, that's good. And it also cleans up Aesthetic, the backyard yeah. a little bit too. So I think they're all positive things. Um, <coughs> the nice thing about the site on three sides, kind of, if there is a back side to the building, um, the trees are pretty mature, you know, there, so we're, we're planning on leaving them all there, and, and it's a real nice uh, uh, neighbor from that perspective. And you can see most of that, you know, in the aerial, there are definitely mature trees that are established, and we shouldn't have to touch any of those, so. Oh, so you will have that whole building, right? <coughs> yes, BRD right. is yeah. leasing the entire building. Yes. You know, and building out a large percentage of it, mm -hmm. as Bob mentioned, in this first phase. Yeah, 50,000 and then yeah. later. So, but you said, Bob, you said that you're going to have 400 employees, but you have only 250 parking places. So where would the 
the others will park on the roadside then? Uh, no, we <coughs> would develop that empty lot that we've leased adjacent to it on the east side. Oh, okay. <coughs> Sorry. No, there we we leased the lot on the on the okay. east side of this. Okay. Okay. Uh, just for that purpose. Okay. Once we once we reach the 225, mm. actually before then, obviously, mm. then then the intent would be to uh, to develop parking on that empty lot or a portion of that empty lot, not the okay. whole thing. Initially. So now you will be the sole owner or leaser of that place. There's no one else now, right? That's Earlier? correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, I guess the only other question is. Uh, having recently rewatched drone footage of the flood event, was this building flooded in August? No, no this, this it was, was not. not. Okay. Yeah. I was just going to say that you're storing chemicals. That's. But I'm sure there's federal no. regulations on that. Actually, it's interesting. None of the Bob's uh, buildings were flooded. And right. we actually have the building across the street yeah. um, at uh, 30. 230, I believe, is the address. It's to the west, right? It's, <coughs> yeah, mm -hmm. on that drawing right there would be oh, okay. not sorry, that one, but the one adjacent. Closer to that there. There you go, that yeah. one right yeah. there. The yeah, right there. and there was water that came out toward the back of the building, but it never made it right. okay. made it into the building. Good. Yeah, I guess well, he thought it through to make it a little bit uh, higher elevation. Yes, Jennifer. Will any mechanicals be updated as part of the renovations? We are we are gutting the entire building okay. and. The only thing that's remaining is is the exterior shell, the roof, and the, and the structural okay. steel. We're, we will change absolutely everything else. Okay. Wow. Given that you're putting this new entrance piece in, <coughs> I wonder if that shouldn't reflect itself in the immediately adjacent parking. Right? You, you know, that there's... I think it's in the middle of... <coughs> where it's where the two um, handicapped spaces are i think right correct yes um, i i wonder whether you, you couldn't make it a little bit more of a an <coughs> arrival place no and i know that might mean giving up a couple of spaces that would be I, against our intent mm. we don't really <coughs> we want there to be somewhat of a main entrance to the building but we still want it to be low key we don't want people driving by and saying oh there's ppd we're going to that's where we want to go only employees okay. in delivery, right? That's correct, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, we, we will um, escort visitors to <coughs> that building, but it's not, it is not intended to be. Oh, from th across the way. Th the, what? yeah, the, the, yeah. Anybody, yeah. We're still kind of developing <coughs> visitation protocols for this building. Okay. Uh, right now, we're leaning toward people coming to the building across the street, signing in, and then being escorted over here. Okay. Yeah, that it's we don't want that to be the first place that they go. Okay. Yeah, considering the nature of what you do, all the preclinical clinical <laughs> trials, you know, I guess that's how it has to be. So. Well, yeah, I mean, and everything we do, every building we have is card accessible. You cannot mm -hmm. get in there yeah. unless mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. an employee that is escorting you. Okay. Yeah. I, I would move approval as a minor SIP modification. Second. Okay. More questions now. How many truck deliveries per day do you expect, if any? Oh, we'll get uh, box truck like FedEx and UPS and things like that on a daily basis. Okay. Uh, tractor trailer deliveries, it, it really depends um, on, on the time of the season, what we happen to be doing in the lab, but they're not going to be any more than two or three a week at the most. I'd add, um, you know, we're, we're eliminating a number of dock doors, mm -hmm. so between a single tenant building, there's going to be less deliveries probably than when it was a multi-tenant building. So <coughs> less traffic, which is good. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, it's an excellent project. I think it's going to be helpful to PPD and as well as the city. So, okay, all those in favor of the, favor of the motion to approve as a um, SIP modification, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes unanimously. Go ahead and celebrate. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. About the weather. So thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. <coughs> As you leave, when do you anticipate this happening? <coughs> We're gonna start demolition uh, middle of March. Okay. So the next item in the <coughs> specific implementation plan modification for signage. Elbex Coffee House, <coughs> 1824 Parmenter Street. 
Mark. It's mine, and I just realized that what I, uh, I forwarded you separately a um, a photo showing the rendering of where the signs would be. Yep. I received it after the packet was assembled, and I forgot to add it to the packet. So, it's Emily. Yeah, it you want should to be. Pull it up? <coughs> well, do you? Okay, let's pull it up. Mm. Um, I don't know what all oh, the file number. We know. That. That's what you want. So now David had Business some course. issues with the... Uh, right, that's why I wanted to uh, pull up the file. Sorry, I didn't <coughs> think of that. Uh, but now we're web connected, so we got to un- disconnect, right? You have to be connected to the IAC. Bear with me, sorry about that. Okay, um, can we, what's, what else is on the agenda? On the comp plan. Oh, the comp plan. Why don't we do the community that? campus plan? Yeah. We can do community yeah, campus let's do that. while he saves it in the file. Okay, all right. We are going to move that. on to the community campus plan request for proposals and then come back to this one later. So, Abby, that's yours. Yeah, so um, we had presented a draft of the request for proposals for community campus plan at the retreat, Mm -hmm. and we had some good feedback. Um, The group recommended um, that on the community campus committee, which is the memo, rather than having a downtown resident, have it be just any Middleton resident appointed by the Common Council. So we made that change. Um, The other recommendations were... Um, David had recommended that we look at a larger planning area um, so that the context, the larger context of the entire downtown is considered in the plan. Uh, So we've made that change. And then the other major change was to include um, in the goals section that we would like for the consultant to protect the historic nature of downtown Middleton. That was Kathy's suggestion. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that those were the main (coughs) changes that we made to this document. Otherwise, it's it's exactly what we presented. Okay. Yes, Kathy. You want to come to the mic here? How about the building committee? They have Purdue over the 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 city building. Will they be part of that or part of the meetings and stuff? Yeah. I thought about that too because I, I always forget that the city has a building committee yeah. because we and, and they haven't so, met yet. So. Well, we so infrequently have <laughs> right. a, no. a new public building or a modification, but it's made up of <coughs> the mayor, the city administrator, and then one council the, the member, council, council president. Council president. Oh, mm-hmm. So it's three three members, correct? <clears throat> yeah, we already got the quorum here. Oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's a good question. I suppose we could have any recommendations go through the building committee before, from the community campus committee to the building committee before it comes back to the plan commission. Would that make sense? Or would it make sense to have the council <coughs> representative be the council president? Um, because the council president serves on the building no, it, committee. It, the building committee is the mm-hmm. mayor, council president, and the city administrator. Oh, yeah, but, good point. But Abby's talking about Mike. Yeah. Microphone, or can we bring you one? <laughs> For the campus committee, having the mayor's already on it, right? No. No? Not necessarily. Um, we have a common council appointment, a plan commission appointment, <coughs> PRFC appointment, library director, senior center director, chamber representative. I don't remember if I told Van that yet. Um, and then a Middleton resident appointed by common council. So we could we could have. I guess for efficiency, bring in the building committee. 
What about the CDA? Because some of the properties are <coughs> owned yeah. by the CDA. <coughs> yeah, I mean, there are going to be a lot of city involved. I would kind of be reluctant to expand the community campus committee beyond seven members. Because right. we can help it. This committee is really to oversee the planning process. Right. Obviously, then once you get a draft plan, it would right. go to all those committees for <coughs> Absolutely. comment, feedback. <coughs> yeah, and I mean, we've had some of the, <coughs> along the plaza process, we've taken, um, you know, interim steps to different city committees yeah. so we Everybody could kind of do this. Right. Right. Abby, for the public lands representative, is that a staff person or a no, PRFC? No, not necessarily. So it would be our, a PRFC appointment, and PRFC could decide <coughs> to appoint a staff member, a commission member, or a resident or any other individual. Okay. Yeah, I guess I just want to be sure it's someone that understands all the things that public lands does. Or it'd be up to the public lands committee. Yeah. Same thing for the library. Well, with the library, we actually recommended appointing um, the director in the same okay. way with the senior same. center because they have their own separate buildings and they <coughs> know the needs of their buildings mm -hmm. better than anybody. Yeah, well, that's where I'm thinking the same thing for public uh, lands in that the public lands director knows all the programs going on in the public lands. <coughs> so there's forestry, there's recreation, there's the, all of that and their various needs for those right. individual groups. Well, oh, because they, they aren't their own separate building, that's kind of where I was thinking is like. Mm, yeah, but we've got to make sure the things that they need to have carried out <clears throat> are included in the building. Well, and this would be very similar to the Plaza <laughs> advisory team meetings where we oftentimes have, you know, 15 to 20 people who show up and can provide input. Mm -hmm. So I think that the commission will be open to taking recommendations um, from anybody who's present at the meeting but it's whether they need a formal appointment to be able to do it or not and I, I think the consultant would clearly <coughs> spend some time interviewing mm -hmm. the, All the department, sure. heads, department yeah. heads and staff as to what their needs are what their anticipated mm -hmm. needs are right that clearly needs to be done yeah because this is this is both a kind of a facility needs assessment and then yes. how that works in terms of a spatial that's building. what I'm getting at and we've got public lands is working both with the senior center and the library on various joint programs. Mm -hmm. So it's, you well, need to be able to include all that. Well, maybe PRFC will appoint Matt. I like the size of this committee. It worked well with the Plaza committee. Get more done, yes. say, with less people sometimes. If we yep. just keep adding individuals, I think it's going to get bogged down. Well, I remember when I was first proposing the seven-member um, plaza advisory team meeting, like at all the other staff members here were like, are you crazy, seven members? That's way <laughs> too big for an RFP <laughs> review committee. <laughs> and I was like, but there are so many stakeholders, and I want to make sure that they all have a voice. And um, it has worked really well. Seems seven number members has worked very well. It's been very... We didn't actually think you were crazy. <laughs> Sean Stowski <laughs> thought I was crazy. <laughs> But I think, uh, you know, having only one citizen member for the whole city, that's too little. I mean, you probably need more citizens. You need a wider input. And the plaza committee, you know, I don't know you said that worked well, but that worked really, really well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, uh, you know, more citizens you have, better it would be. Well, and on the plaza, <coughs> it's really just one citizen rep with Rochelle or mm. public input facilitator. I mean, we have other members who have been appointed who are also <coughs> Hilton residents, but they're represented, they're representing committees or. Um, but outside yeah. but outside your committee work, you reached out to the public a great deal with the yes. plaza. Yeah. Yes. And I would yeah. anticipate that you would do the same in this process. The that's true. So yeah. the public process. would have plenty of opportunity mm. to be involved. Yeah, and that's why when we developed the budget for this, we you know we put a hundred and twenty thousand dollar figure on it because 
when the more public input meetings that you're asking a consultant to do, that's a lot of there's a lot of time that goes into that, so it <coughs> ends up being more expensive. But we also think we get a much better project too. But remember, this is a big thing. I mean, you know, it's uh, this is a huge project. <coughs> it's going to be something there for 50 or even 100 years. So, so you know, I guess. Uh, so I think we want to get as much input from the public as it, we can. So. It, it will go through a whole public process. <coughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. just the, like the steering committee. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, there were four public forums, and then we also <coughs> asked for one additional um, type of public participation. So it could be like through social media or a survey or even a design charrette. But we left that up to the consultant to, to <coughs> find their own scope and present it to um, the city. I think a charrette would be helpful. Yeah, it'd be cool. But it would be good if to have. If you've done well. <coughs> it would it be takes a lot to do it well. It would be good to have a diversity of people, you know, from sort of a different viewpoints, different backgrounds. Yeah. So well, I, think that, I think those public meetings could be focused, right? Mm -hmm. They could be focused on the, either on city people mm -hmm. or on, on business uh, <coughs> yeah. people at Wallage. Mm -hmm. business community. Kind of like the public plaza process, right? right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would like to yeah. say, I mean, for the actual design, we're going to be hiring an architect right. and an architectural <coughs> firm. Of course. Which can, and that's what many of the general public are going to be concerned about. But we've got to have this committee to make sure the functions that are carried out in the city get included with the appropriate space. So, Public works needs different kind of space than the recreation department and so on. It's not just designing office space or so on. So I think really including the people that are involved in doing the things that the city does should be the ones that are on this with. <coughs> and then <coughs> citizen input can come in in terms of design and those sorts of things. I thought the first part is actually reasoning well, the visioning what we is what to needs be. to go in there. But those are the details which come much later. Uh, at least, mm. is that not a... That so, not um, I have a suggestion. Maybe you could add <coughs> a portion that includes date, something like data collection, like really research and getting all of the facts together. Yes. And that portion would be a piece of the RFP, and so you would, you would capture all of yeah, those details. that's what I'm talking about. And then the second piece of that would be maybe you want to mention in the RFP <coughs> that um, sort of what the public input, what's desired from this <coughs> that is going to be making some of these decisions and that their recommendations will go to city committees. So then the expectation on the consultant is that they will probably attend some of those city oh. meetings as well. Okay, so scope, um, scope of work, phase one, instead of just identify space needs, that would also include data collection. And then, um, and then making sure that we build into phase, uh, phase two, likely. Well, maybe both phases. So at the end of phase one, when they have all the data collected and the space needs, they take it to various committees instead of just plan commission and council. Play it out a little bit in that RFP. So like yep. public works, library, aging. I'm just public seeing that I, on the on the page it says the first phase of this process will entail gathering data and input from users and stakeholders and developing space needs. So it's. I, I mean that. I think it's already there. It is there. Maybe just exp maybe to capture the needs of the city, saying you know <coughs> interviewing the different business areas in the city departments to identify space needs you know something really specific so you're capturing the specific things you really want and then they'll set aside time for those activities because that will take some time that's it you know <coughs> yeah this is a very big thing which we are going into so this is you know would sort of reflect the image of the city but, and then if you also mention the committees that are involved in sort of how those decisions are, you know, you know the public group will understand the expectations up front. Right. And the consultant will know how to kind of lead them through what the activities are they need to work on. Yeah, it's definitely a good idea to mention all of the committees that will kind of eventually yeah. see it because 
it can <clears throat> add a lot of time to yeah. a project. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's a good idea to be clear about it up front too. I have a couple questions and comments. Um, yes, Ray. Abby, um, under the, uh, let's see, uh, under additional goals, number one, <coughs> ensure the plan retains its relevance for at least 10 years. Seems like that's short. Yeah, that uh, I, short. I would have expected that to be at least 20 to 25 years. <coughs> that uh, don't, don't we want kind of a longer planning horizon for its <coughs> Yeah, I think um, we weren't thinking like that it would meet the space needs of the city for at least 10 years. We were thinking that when they hand over the document to us, if we decide not to build anything or make any improvements, we still want to be able to take what we have in 10 years at that point and hire an architecture firm and not have to like update all of the numbers at that no, point. I understand. Perhaps maybe rethink yeah, make it the, more the, clear. the language to yes. mm -hmm. be more specific. It's, it's the space needs assessment for 10 years, but the kind of vision for downtown is yes. 20, Longer, 30, 50 yeah. years. Yeah. Right. Yep, yep. yep. I yeah. see. Interesting. Yeah. That's a good point. Well, and, um, you know, the library conducted a space needs study, and I would, I would foresee this to be pretty similar to what the library did, you know, where it's like a blocking study and it's showing what can fit on a site and... Mm -hmm you know, what the options are. Okay, there's a four-story building here. The two, first two can be the library, and then you've got City Hall above. Or, you know, what are the various options? There, um, I asked Jocelyn if their study, um, you know, if we could just basically take the numbers, and she said, yeah, it's still very much relevant. Um, it wouldn't require any updates to the square footage needs or anything like that, and there, ha there haven't been significant enough changes in their operations to warrant redoing any part of that analysis. So that's kind of what I was thinking. We want this to still be relevant in 10 years um, in case the city council decides we don't want to build anything for 10 years. So we still want whatever document we have at that point to be able to be turned over to an architecture firm and then take, take the next step. But I'll make that more clear. Another thing I would expect to get out of this is some um, indication of areas of overlap um, you know that the common common spaces that can be used by everybody yep not just by department by department so there's, right. a, there's a sort of an o overall umbrella over that that sort of talks about um, common space if you like yep and I think there are some opportunities there <coughs> um, I, th I can't remember if it was Susan or, or Kathy who alluded to the f the idea that the library has been um, kind of bringing the other departments together, um, recreation and the senior <coughs> center. They've had a goal of like looking at their programming um, b more broadly and figuring out where there's opportunities for collaboration. Um, we've also, we have a meeting now every two weeks where we get together and we talk about these ideas. One of, um, another way that we've been able to collaborate across departments recently is with the horticulture horticulturalist position so we each had a line item we were paying a, a contractor to do um, maintenance on lawns and we realized that we could actually combine these these four line items and we could save the city some money and get a better product so we are we're definitely keen on that and we're looking at ways that um, the departments can collaborate and I think this is this is like the the building form of that yeah, it just reminds me of the uh I don't know, I don't think Wayne and Jen saw it. not this year's retreat, but last year's retreat where the librarian presented what a 21st century yep. library looks like. Uh, if there's a way you could link to that, because that was really interesting about the flexible yeah. community space. And mm -hmm. <coughs> Are you guys here for that? <coughs> no, okay. I was just in Austin, Texas, and they have an awesome new library yep. that has a lot of spaces like that. That was, I mean, that presentation kind of blew your mind. Yes, like, it was it's the idea cool. of kind of this yeah. flexible community space. It can be, whether it's youth programming <coughs> or job training or all sorts of different. And also, you have to envision what the whole technology would be like 20, 25, 30 years right. from now. I mean, the pace of uh, advancement is so rapid. So, so it's, uh, you know, flexibility will, will be abso absolutely essential but also somebody with some visioning skills who can, uh, you know, even from, from UW or wherever, so like Kurt or somebody, you know, that where is it going, 
and uh, you know what 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 it be, would be like 25 years from now and what do we need for that time so i think the visioning skills and visioning for 25 years is pretty important and the flexibility yeah. is a big part of ideally it. a multi staff firm that we hire would have mm -hmm. All the way down to interior architects that work with space needs flexible to uh, a landscape architect site planners. We um, have partners that offer. Yeah, that. all right. Project <laughs> schedule seems to be a mistake. Uh, deadline for submitting questions is the 16th of April. Deadline to submit proposals is three days later. Um, it hardly gives you time to answer the questions. Yeah. I wonder whether you meant March the 16th by No, I actually meant April, but maybe I was being optimistic. Uh, I was thinking uh, if they're going to ask a question, we would at least want like a day to respond and get back to them, but you're you've got to, you've got to get it to all the all the video, confirms, yeah. right? Yep. <coughs> I, would, uh, the I would uh, definitely put it, it April 1st. I think, that's not too, I, think, I think that's too close. Okay. I would say March 20th. I, I would March 19th. Yes, March, March 19th. March 19th. I don't know okay. what day that is, but you know the the other thing that that does is it starts um, it, it makes sure people start thinking about the project. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. Um, don't have to think about it till April the 16th because uh, that's that's the mm -hmm. right. They will um. say March 19th. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that's the end of me. Mm -hmm. We have some further comments on the uh, selection criteria. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> um, a couple things. Uh, I guess the most important is the the relative weights assigned to some of these. Um, it seems to me that the actually the design mm -hmm. approach uh, warrants more than fifteen uh, percent of of the weight. To me, that would be a really important indication of how they approach this project. Mm -hmm. And so I'd, I'd, I would recommend looking at that as more like a 20 to 25 okay. point. Um, and then um, under the overview of firm and assigned team, I, 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 w I would suggest rewording that to be qualifications <coughs> of the firm and okay. the assigned team. And really, you can and combine that with relevant experience. It's it, that's and, one and that's, that's why, mm -hmm. to, to me, that's where you would take off some of the points because those together are really the one qualification category. of the firm and assigned team and the relevant project experience are really about the 50 points experience <coughs> that, yeah. that, that they bring. Um, and then finally, uh, rather, the first one, rather than say overview of the design approach, I just make it design approach and preliminary schedule. You're really yeah. evaluating the design approach rather than the overview of it. Okay. So, um, so let's make design approach and preliminary schedule 25, 25 points. points. <coughs> um, should we keep qualifications of firm and assigned team at? Oh, hold, hold on a minute, that or, before you okay, do Okay, no, go ahead. I, I would suggest that the fee proposal shouldn't be getting points. That means the last fee per person that's the cheapest gets 25 points straight off, right? And that puts them, puts them right up front. Does the city have rules about about not for that? professional? Not, not for, for professional, professional services. Yeah. You don't have to bid out. And I would no. agree. <coughs> Maybe Give ten it. points. Yeah, I Maybe feel like it should points. have it something should have because some. I'm it's afraid that our points. finance committee won't <laughs> like it if we don't assign. I it can any see points. the editorial in George's <laughs> paper now. <laughs> if we don't give some points to the fee proposal. So, so I think the important point there is is it's not just the number; it's what you're getting for. Let's evaluate the whole proposal and then see how much it costs rather than putting enough points in there <coughs> that it almost says that whoever's the lowest gets the job. I think that's the important point. It's not, it's not a bid, mm -hmm. but we are looking at value <coughs> delivered for, for the dollar. So 10 or 15 <coughs> points. Yeah, I think that's a good point. <laughs> you know, their quality is very important. And, yeah. uh, could go 20 points for fee, 60 points for firm plus experience, and then another 20 points for the design approach and preliminary schedule? Is that what I'm hearing? Or Read those off in order. 
So a 20 points for fee proposal. 20 points okay, for 20 points report. for the design approach. Okay. Right, and then combine two and three as the firm, assigned team, and project experience is 60 points. Okay. And then 20 points for the fee proposal. Yeah, that works. 20, 60, 20? 20, 60, 20. Yeah. Works. <clears throat> Does that sound good? Ken's still turning her nose up. Yeah, a little bit because um, at this stage, I guess I'm wondering, we know what the budget is for the effort. So are there is there an expectation there'll be competitive bids based on that? Well, I don't think the RFP says you can go up to 120000 I think that's just a line item in the... Line item it's in the budget. Just budget. It's just our <coughs> line item I mean, budget. Many <coughs> firms will probably, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we get that as a question, which we would yeah. respond to when we say, you know, we have 120000 funded through TIF 3, or a firm may go on to our finance department's website and pull up the budget and get that information themselves, but I didn't include it in the article. I would think that they won't be dummies. They, <coughs> they already know it, so. I do think they need to submit a co what their expectation is for cost. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I'd go with 10 points. Yeah. I mean, when I think <coughs> of other professional services, sometimes the, <coughs> the fee you propose is, uh, you know, for every public meeting that lasts two hours, we oh, need yeah. this much staff time. And this, so that then you can decide, do we want three public meetings or That's six right. public meetings? Or a charrette is... X amount. X amount because it requires <coughs> three staff and right. a designer and yeah. note taker in three hours. Just, just before you finalize it, go th work work through it because if it's whatever it is, the fee proposal is an absolute number, and the top person I would guarantee it will get twenty five points, or whatever the maximum number of points are, and the worst, the, the lowest, will get virtually <coughs> zero. Whereas for the overview of the, of the design approach and the overview of the firm, they're subjective, and nobody will get the total number of points for those. Right. So, what, so what about design approach is 30 points, team and experience is 60, and then fee proposal is 10? Is it about where you're going? I'm OK with that. Well, and um, so <coughs> maybe this worked with the plaza we, the, the firm that was selected out of the six was actually the most expensive of the six, but um, there was a lot of comfort with the Plaza advisory team that they, so we would pay this fixed amount, but that would pay off when it comes to actually constructing the Plaza. Right. And I'm guessing that whoever is appointed to the campus committee would, would be able to weigh that as well. Because, I mean, this amount of money, 120000 although it's a lot of money, in the scheme of the Civic Campus construction project is relatively small. So it would make sense for the city to invest this now and get a good product that we can rely on when we <coughs> go forward for the more expensive campus. Yeah, I still would think it's a lot of money. A good design can save you money in the long run. Absolutely. Something that uh, certainly true about engineering for Stormwater Utility Board, right? That good design that saves you money is... It's good design. And this planning process can save money. <laughs> so, Abby, Abby, under the key, it's tough anyway, so. key proposal, um, I'd suggest we might want some wording <coughs> indicating that they, they should submit a detailed budget breakdown um, that so, so that it's not just idea. a, it's just not just a number, but you're actually seeing components of what they're delivering. That they've thought, thought it through. Right, a detailed budget. Exactly. Idea. I mean, when I've had some minimums, like, you know, you have a, a top-level person at X number of dollars per hour and this many meetings and this many, each report, each design change costs you this much. Helps judge the value also. Right. Yep. I'll ask what are for your that? expectations <coughs> for the ranking? Who will do that? The ranking? Yeah. Um, that would be done by the campus committee. So um, so there are seven members. Do you have them up there, did you say? Oh, it's just the we should say that in the RFP, that this will be ranked by the campus committee if it's not already. Yep, it says that we'll review, I guess. But 
Which part are you looking at? Oh, here we are. Okay. The top of the last page, the community yeah, campus I, committee may request to interview finalist firms and will make a recommendation. So, and will also perform the ranking of the <coughs> proposals. <coughs> or it could be council at a committee of the whole that they sit there with the, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we learned is it's good to have a committee Sorry. between the staff the and the council. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And it's also good to have some criteria, so I appreciate the discussion tonight, have the criteria and the points spelled out. Would it help on the issue of the fee, instead of just saying fee proposal, to say the criterion is cost effectiveness of fee proposal? Yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. That's a good way of doing it, yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. Detailed. Spoken like an engineer, it's not It's not just the cost, it's the cost effectiveness, right? Because exactly. yep. a BMW costs more than a old <coughs> pickup, but usually think you're getting, I don't know. You're getting a band. Band's like not sure. <laughs> do we need a motion? I guess we do, because we need to make a recommendation. Move, move to, to recommend the... Uh, RFP to council as amended or as with the suggestions. Second. Okay, discussion. So it is, uh, you want to read the final points? It's uh, 60, 20, 30, 60, 10. 30, 60, 10. Okay. And two and three are combined and reworded. Okay. okay. And if you need me to read off the changes, I can. No, we, you got them. That's all right. Okay. Okay, so all those in favor of the motion to approve the <coughs> community campus plan request for proposal as modified, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <coughs> so there we are. So now, Mark, are you ready? Yep. Okay. Sorry that I'd forgotten to uh, save this file. I'd emailed it to you earlier. Um, <coughs> so what's before you tonight is a sign package for this building, which will be the site of a cafe called the uh, Hellbox. Um, they are proposing two signs on each facade. Uh, <coughs> can zoom in a little bit. So you are considering that H as a sign <coughs> and then L box, right? It's a logo that goes with their sign, correct? So those are two. No, 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 that's one. That's one? The other one, no, is, the other one right is over here. I'm sorry. See oh. to the right here. Okay. And then so these, uh, these the say it's, it reads coffee, roasters, and kitchen. Those are 23 square feet. And the Hellbox yeah, yeah, sign yeah. is 19 okay, square feet. Okay. Huh. Mark, do you know if there'll be any window signage? <coughs> uh, I don't know, but I would imagine that they will uh, put a sign on their door, you know, some stenciling, or, or that's pretty common. Um, we have a provision in our sign code that allows a certain square footage, a certain amount of signage. I, I can get into that if you'd like, but that wasn't part of their application. Um, the... Uh, uh, Commissioner Reed asked a question about, uh, and, uh, well, since you're here, why don't you go ahead and raise your concern, David? I, I don't like the notion of them putting the, the, those two signs on the tower. <coughs> and I think they could be slid to um, where the Underneath lights the are, lights, yeah. which is where, obviously, Terence intended there to be signs. Mm. That's a good idea. Um, there, are no, there are no lights on the tower, therefore, I think assuming that he didn't intend there to be sign lights on the tower. There are, I can't remember. A camera. Right. Yeah, those are cameras, yeah. not safety yeah. lights. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I just to see so if these were illuminated. I, 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 don't think, I don't think it should go <coughs> on the tower itself. Yeah, he doesn't have any others there, does he? Well, I think what they're, they're, yeah, they're going to occupy, I believe, the entire, it looks to me like they're going to occupy the entire ground floor of this right. building. Yeah, but David does have a point. So they yeah, are not, they are not lighted. Be, they were not intended to be there. And uh, one thought, I, one thing I've was thinking in response to <coughs> what uh, David was saying, you, you know, they just put up their their rooftop sign, Middleton Center. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, uh, multi-tenant <coughs> properties um, have a name, but they don't necessarily have a sign for them. And so that is one thought I had too, is, is to identify this at Middleton Center. But if, if the objection is, or if the concern is to have a sign of any sort on the tower, then, <coughs> then I understand where that's coming from. Clearly the, the 
gooseneck lighting to the right and to the left immediately there does not have a sign under it. So I understand where, where David's coming from. I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Otherwise, what I was getting at is, is the idea of, <coughs> if, of identifying this. That, you know, it, it seems to me instead of having this specified that the tower be specific to a business, that that could be a way to identify the uh, development overall, too. Where are the entry doors for the hallbox? Um, <coughs> I believe they're right. Well, there's so one not here. not in that tower. Correct. Are there any entry doors in that tower? I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. If there were, I could yeah. make, see a case yeah. for signage there, but if it's not... Oh, yeah, there. it's just a... It doesn't make any sense at all. Well, it looks yeah, like there's a door. Well, there there's a door there. Yeah. Or there is a door. Yeah. That's where the window, you know, I'm wondering <coughs> if also a door the here. signage component on that corner <laughs> sort of would have less emphasis, and David, you might think that's more appropriate on the corner. The glass, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, it, there might well be an entrance there. It looks like there is, mm -hmm. but that uh, you know, there is one at the next <coughs> entrance and one at the next There's entrance as well, yeah. depending on how this broke up as into individual units. So these people will have four entrances, not including the two in the tower or the one in the tower, um, it, but th which they won't use, obviously, or I don't think they'll use. But I, I think this is totally inappropriate in the tower. Well, then that raises the question. <coughs> if you take the sign with the red shieldy thingy, what is that uh, emblem? Mm -hmm. And it says Hellbox Coffee Roasters and Kitchen. <coughs> and the next one over also says Coffee Roasters and Kitchen. I mean, I don't want to yeah. micromanage someone's yeah. wording, but um, I don't know. It's Should it just say Hellbox with the shield? Is that what you're thinking? No, I'm just, I mean, the difficulty is since everything we approve is now PDD, our sign ordinance doesn't really apply. It's always <laughs> that we, we use it we, as we a usually guide. apply it as a guide yeah. <clears throat> um, in terms of height and stuff, but in terms of location. I agree with what David's saying. It, it shouldn't be on that tower. I will say what I one thing that I like about this is that the, the ladder heights are only, I think it was nine inches. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's understated and it's appropriate for an urban context to right. have that type right. of size. So I, I give, you know, give mm -hmm. them credit for that. Yeah, I have no problem with the sign itself. Any other? They obviously are looking for symmetry on the tower to, mm -hmm. and for the business too. Although there's not symmetry with the clocks, I noticed. <laughs> what? <laughs> Behind them, do you think the clock? No, they're just at different times. <coughs> oh, oh, it's just ah. <laughs> Need to be fixed. Yeah, yeah, I don't think there should be anything on the tower. Okay, so that's the motion then. Uh, and then how would we express that? That we move to recommend approval of the sign package, uh, except require. What would be the easiest for you to enforce a motion? Well, except that the <laughs> signage should be moved above the uh, awning and off the <coughs> tower? That's specific enough to give you move, a... Move it from, from the tower from to, the the, to the adjacent set of gooseneck lights. Well, an awning, right. Um, there's, a, the awning. there's a place down the street uh, that you, you, you can see, uh, I can't remember what the name of that is. Maisami. That's Maisami. And then there's another place called Long Table <laughs> that has um, actually a sign on the awning itself. So that seems to be the way it was designed, is if you're going to have a sign, it's by gooseneck lighting or on the awning. Um, so that's kind of what I'm hearing is your rationale. Yeah. So directing the applicant to work with staff to um, relocate those signs to um, the other awning and gooseneck area. Yeah. That's okay. my motion. At least Need a second. Hopefully it's recorded. I got like it. That. I don't want to have to say it nope, again. I got it. You got it. <coughs> okay. I know who, who seconded it. Did David? Those are my understanding. It would not come back here. It would just you. You'd work work out the details, Mark. If that's fine with you, that's <coughs> yeah. might. Is that okay with you, Wayne? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion, as made by Kurt, say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? So the motion okay. passes. <coughs> On to comprehensive plan update. Okay. The um, staff comments uh, said that we were going to distribute uh, draft chapters, <coughs> but over the last few days we have been contemplating um, proposing a different approach to what we're doing. And as you know, we've been working on the comp plan um, for the last several years. We've had a lot of public input. Um, we've brought some chapters here. We've had different feedback from plan commission members and also from committee members. And I think one of the things that we'd like to do is take a little bit of a step back, recognize that what we're trying to do is blend the work that we've done in the past with the fact that we have a fairly new um, plan commission and council that we want to be part of um, going forward and, and finishing the plans. So um, we've looked at a couple different plans and really like the way that <coughs> several of them have, have formatted it. What we're proposing to do is take what we've done and update it in terms of a format. And um, we've got a, a comprehensive plan update outline here to go over. Um, <coughs> One of the, this is, this is a, taking some things from the city of Madison and a couple from some other plans. It's not copying it exactly, but there's a few things that we really liked about it. So we're proposing to um, have a series of work sessions here at the Planning Commission starting at the next meeting. And we have a schedule on each of these. One of the ways we'd like to lay it out is um, either call it a vision <coughs> or a goal and have one or two of those, probably two, for each chapter. And we would come with the proposal for that, those visions and goals. And, and again, I don't know, we, we have an example here under A, under 1A. Um, <clears throat> the vision, Middleton is a compact walkable community. Or a goal, Middleton strives to be a compact walkable community. So it's up to you how you prefer to maybe label that or show that. But we would try to come up with something for you to work from and, and change the wording on or the focus. And then what we'd like to do is have a <clears throat> part of that chapter be the context. What are the issues? What are the um, things that, you know, what's, what's the history of that? And then what are our strategies um, in terms of how to, how to achieve the vision or the goal? And then what are the action items underneath that? <clears throat> so for each of those, and it's fairly ambitious, and I guess what we would propose, and Mark and Abby, correct me if I'm wrong, we would propose that on the 26th, for instance, we come with the draft um, uh, for you to, to look at in terms of the vision or goal <clears throat> and some of the proposed strategies to get there. Could and you then, send, I mean, could you send it <coughs> ahead of time so that one can read it? Sure, we can do that. And mm -hmm. then what we would propose is the work session and we would also ask that there be public input at the beginning, <coughs> too, and that they could they could see it then on the on the website as well. And then we would draft the remaining portions of that, like the fleshing out the, the chapter, bring it back to the next meeting where we're talking about a new chapter, strategy and vision and goals. We just this way we're kind of building it more incrementally, and we're not throwing out what we've already done. We're going to use that as the basis because we're really like that. But it's just a different way to format it. And we got pretty excited looking at some of the possibilities, maybe making it a little heavier on graphics or pictures, um, and just a little easier to, um, in terms of reading, anybody that's picking it up. Make one of the things we liked about the, you now this is my favorite part from the, from the uh, Madison yeah. one. Six elements, 12 goals, 50 strategies, 150 actions. I like that. Kind and of and this is their that. organizational <laughs> structure here. That's why <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm yeah. this up. But that, I do like that. I think that uh, does make sense. Yeah. And um, <coughs> then we would, by the end of May, we would be um, through each of the chapters, and then we could see where we're at in terms of referral of each of these maybe. And maybe you want to do that as we go, depending on how complete it is, to different committees, water resources, public works, public lands. Um, and then, again, we're just we're building on what we've done and kind of adding um, each, you know, each chapter, and then we could decide when the public hearing might be. <clears throat> so I, 
I probably have left something out. I don't. I, I'm not sure that we're excited about. I like about this it. idea. Yeah. I like this. Oh, good. Um, the one good. thing I would request is, like the mayor mentioned, it would be nice if we had some of the stuff prior to the meeting, okay. so yep. that we can <laughs> absolutely. We can. I, I think that would help facilitate moving the conversation along, yeah. as we could have our questions beforehand. I like that. Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> the problem that we're trying to solve here is we've gotten <clears throat> we've got a lot of narrative, and <laughs> so some of our sections, you know, I took the housing element, for example, the draft to the workforce housing committee and. Um, and they had so many ideas um, for improving the document <laughs> and I started to think that maybe we need to simplify things so rather than having yeah. a section that has 50 objectives which are going to be really hard to recite to anybody when they ask like what, yeah. what are the city's goals we should really try to simplify it make it more user friendly like Madison's where you know it's it's really graphic it has a lot of really nice <clears throat> imagery um, it's really well designed I'll pull one as an example yeah um, but then also to kind of bring you guys along like in the process by showing you like each step of the outline so before we go and do all the work to reformat the narrative into this new approach to get you to buy in before we do the work kind of to make sure that you're on board and also I think the strategies is a really good way to look at it so <coughs> this is this is a really good example of um, Madison's plan if you go up random. to the very first part of the housing section I'm not in, I don't think this is so they have six um, six housing isn't in this one elements oh I'm sorry housing starts on part two of the very first yeah. page but I wanted to show something on this um, if we can quickly so here, here they have a generalized land use map, and we actually have worked on something similar. And you saw this at the um, and you have hard workshop. copies, that yeah. you and we can put them on our we can put right. it on our website so everyone else has right. access. So we have actually a very similar <coughs> classification system working with our planning consultant, um, similar to what Madison has done in in many ways. So, um, so we have a lot of the nuts and bolts done. Um, but what we what I wanted to show here was. And so uh, fewer categories. <laughs> I mean, there's there's the difference inherent <coughs> between a future land use plan, which is conceptual, mm -hmm. and one which has a lot of different categories that seem to map into a zoning right. category. Right. right. Well, it's possible and that this yeah. will morph too. As yeah, I mean, it, the zoning has to be consistent with it. Yeah. But um, <coughs> if we can have fewer categories, it might be helpful. Yeah. And and then I, yeah. what I particularly like about this specific uh, map from Madison's is. Um, how simple it is actually it's the colors represent established transitioning and future centers so it's a temporal aspect to it existing uh, changing and future and then the size of the circle represents the overall importance so neighborhood community regional and then the lines indicate quarters so you know we've talked a lot about University Avenue as a quarter for example and what's appealing about this type of planning is, is you know you don't get into lot by lot mapping you get into concepts which are much easier to convey and you can <coughs> get community support for these ideas I for example um, was thinking we would identify Middleton um, Springs for example as a I mean it could be an established center it could be a transitioning center if we envision it becoming something else uh, over time so you know there's ways to I, I, I really like this and so we may this may be a, a direction we want to go and obviously in the uh, tan area it shows peripheral growth areas um, in Madison, so I, I really like this one. Um, I'll go to housing. Yep, this yeah. going to housing. See, Mark, when you look at this one, it's not really overpopulated by the colors. Right. So right. when you look at this one, it's really hard to tell what's right, what. Right. You just have so many. So, right. Well, they're two different not, things, though. Too. Right. Yeah, I, so, I know, but and that's just, why. So I used to teach comprehensive planning, and I used to call that this proverbially the sticks and balls approach, which is on a map, <laughs> you draw circles around your major activity centers. And then you draw lines in between them. I mean, it's a little more sophisticated than that, but it's basically <laughs> balls are activity centers, right? Because we used to do like the styrofoam, and then the stick is the corridor, either connecting jobs in housing or jobs in uh, recreation centers. So this is the colors look good, but it's really uh, I think yeah, it's uh, hard to tell what's what. So <laughs> well, yeah. Well, and we would probably modify the colors slightly to to fit the overall theme of the document. But I did want to show 
So this, <clears throat> this structure that we talked about with um, either a vision or a goal, whichever you <coughs> prefer, and then having the strategies and then the action items below, this is a really nice example of the way that Madison did it. So in their housing section, they have two goals. And every section is that way. They only have two goals. <coughs> I think it makes it um, really easy to articulate you know, what the city's housing Put goals are. Yeah. There are two things. Two broad overarching goals and then if you scroll um, after the context section or the intro section um, then there are their housing strategies there are eight and then um, if you continue to scroll um, within each of those strategies there are more specific actions that they're going to take um, to, to meet the, the strategy and the overall goal but what's nice about it is that they've formatted their entire document so that the strategies um, are either on one page or two pages of the document. So if you have, if we have a resident come in and they say, what is a complete neighborhood or we're interested in learning more about um, the city's goals for complete neighborhoods, we can print off one page of the plan and it includes the whole thing. And it's, right, it, it's, I don't know, it's just formatted really nicely. And I don't think we can get to this level of design with our staff because in we don't budget. in our budget <laughs> Which is, yeah, we correct. just just don't have this type of um capability in-house and we don't have any consulting funds for the project but i think we can move toward a, a more user-friendly user document in format yeah i really yeah, in format so that's our proposal okay when when do you show the plan so um so what we're talking about is um I think that the document that we handed out with the outlines includes dates for work sessions. So what we would plan to bring on 226, for example. I'll um, put the packet for that. No, sorry, or, you, what, you're misunderstanding my question. You, we have, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but we've still not got a plan. Right. We've got all components of a plan. No places that I've done these things before, the argument has been that you shouldn't go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine plan. You know, you want the plan somewhere up front that sort of excites people and then goes through it and looks for the justifications for that plan. Right? So there could be two ways to do it, right? So chapter one is kind of more of the vision and uh, at least a conceptual plan right or if you want to kind of do a hybrid you do a separate document like an executive summary citizen summary instead of executive right the six pages that hits the highlights shows yeah. the fancy maps yeah, yeah. I, well, I don't, I don't want to have to sort of wade through the whole thing to get to the plan because yeah. Yeah. in some ways in at least Wisconsin comprehensive plans the real meat is in the housing element Right, because that's where the law requires that you meet your housing demand, and in the future land use. So I know that what happens when people go to read comprehensive plans, having read way too many of them in my career, is they jump right in it and look, what color is my house? Right, and that's where you want to actually avoid that. Right, right. Because then they're immediately going to see whether there's a land use change around them <coughs> as opposed to what's the what's the vision of the whole city. Well, and David, I think what we're trying to get from you guys <coughs> is some confirmation of the the overall outline so that you agree with the visions that we we have interpreted from the input that we received before we draft any document we we want you to agree with you okay. know the the outline and then we would this is not an outline of the document no this well not yet this is work at the moment this is a proposal for the. This is kind of just the overall structure, and then we would continue to fill this in with a lot more detail. And every step of the way, we're kind of hoping to get your feedback. We make modifications, and that would all happen before we draft the document. But we also would like to, um, at the next, I think, seven plan commission meetings, we would also like to have. Uh, comments um, from citizens present, or I, I'm not sure how we would need to word it on the agenda, but it would be yeah. similar to um, the council meetings where we would allow members of the public to come up and speak about the topics. So land use for the next one, and then transportation. And the goals that we put in, or the vision statement, however you want to say it, for each 
chapter, you might completely rework at that work session. You might say, well, we really want to you know, do this, and the strategies too, and then we would take that back, and our assignment between that and the time that the next packet goes out is to flesh out that chapter and also work on the goals and strategies for the next one and put those in the packet for that meeting. So you're kind of, it's kind of building on oh, it. Right. Yeah. And then by the end of that, you have that full one, and hopefully everybody's like, wow, this is really exactly what we want to say. And we've had citizen input on the way, in addition to what we've already had. Um, and then we can see where we're at in June. Um, and if you want to hold a hearing, or if it, if it hasn't been sent to the committees yet, it could be. Right, we, I think we would want to circulate <coughs> it to many of the, the other committees, but we probably want to wait until we have the whole document pretty well drafted before we start circulating. Well, we do want a larger hearing. You know, I guess that's yeah. the, Mm -hmm. And here, We're if required. we have a weekly thing, how would people comment unless they have any, if they haven't read anything? I mean, it's... Uh, it's in the oh, we... Time. No, no, I mean, would it be put on the website? Where it oh, will of be course. available for people yeah, to read? If it's in the packet, it'll be on, it'll be on our... It'll be okay. on, in on base. So we, actually had been, we actually had been putting our chapters that were completed on the website. just wasn't very user-friendly, accessible. We can work on that. And making people aware, sending by notify me or something, you know, this is uh, coming and they will have an opportunity to come and speak, so. so. What I really like about the Madison plan, the document, is that first chapter called their growth framework right. is really at most 10 pages of text. It tells you... What's the point? There's the introduction. Right, the introduction. And then it's basically that we're going to basically preserve, right, neighborhoods, make complete neighborhoods, and then here's our growth areas, our growth mm -hmm. corridors. Mm -hmm. And then, then the concept maps, scroll down, right, you've got that concept map. Right. Something like that would be great. And then you've got the more generalized land use map. Yep. And so that's kind of, those are the elements of the plan. And actually, I like this one, too. We At first, when we saw this, I thought, well, this is kind of odd. But what they did is they, it's kind of their catch-all of things that came up during the planning process. For example, for example, glacier features, protecting those. You know, things that are, you know, th there's just a lot of interesting notes that they put in here. And I, I don't know if those numbers go with, uh, oh, yeah, they put yeah. the numbers on here. So there you go. So they identified some, some, some key uh, features that they wanted to, to note. Um, and then it also gets into describing different, uh, we, we thought this would actually integrate better into our land use, or in this case, maybe yeah. housing section. Um, you know, how they, what they consider low resident, uh, residential, low medium residential. Um, interesting, by the way, look at the medium residential is two to five stories. Yeah. Um, you know, that's how they define it, which makes sense. Every, uh, uh, and then pictures that give that representative images of, of what they, you know, what this looks like to people. Well, and even that's funny because every architecture book I have is up to five stories is low rise for oh. architecture <laughs> buildings. Yeah. Right? Five to 12 stories is usually medium rise. And then yeah. Yeah. Not in medium. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. Well, and every community has its own context, yeah. obviously, right. too, but, uh, and that's something we'll address. We just really, are, as you can tell, we're pretty impressed with what Madison yeah. did, yeah. And we rec but we recognize that they are, you know, they have 30 Twice, plus, 30 plus planners, staff, so. yeah. Yeah, they have and, and more than 10 times our size, so. <laughs> we're excited to. You know, I guess the comment, I'll just kind of springboard off David a little bit. The, I, the concept about beginning with the end in mind or what maybe the vision and the context of the plan really might help some of the discussion. So it's, you know, planning's messy. It's not always a linear this, 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 but I understand this concept and re getting the public here and talking about these issues I think is the most important thing and it's a great strategy to do that. So I think this is good. How this fits into the overall plan should be part of that discussion I think as we do this and so I don't know, you know what that might be but if there are some components that you've thought through already through the planning process that you know are part of the concept on a conceptual level for Middleton's plan. Um, those bigger ideas might be the things that are the, the binding <coughs> components that bring all these things back. I've actually been thinking 
along the same lines that <coughs> I, I, I really like the, the structure mm -hmm. that you um, mapped out here, but I think of the goals being more relevant to, to each of those area, but that, but if there was a, a, an overall vision that could, a short vision that could be painted initially, yep. and then could continue to evolve mm -hmm. actually as, as the individual elements are fleshed out. But I do think something of an uh, umbrella vision um, that the elements would fit into. Well done. Yeah, I was going to give the it. umbrella. Well, I was going to get. <laughs> I, I, I was actually going to get to that. Yeah, I think um, it will help oh, wow. people make comments too, because they'll sort of understand. What the overall? You know the yeah. Where are we with land use relative to the overarching? I actually like that umbrella concept. Yeah, what's that? Nice? So. Yeah, we like yeah, we like it. <coughs> um, and then the other concept they have four uh, guiding lenses. They call them yep. equity, sustainability, health, and adaptability. And here are some of the quotes. Um, I think Abby mentioned this already. If not, you mentioned no, it I today didn't. at our staff meeting. Yeah, you didn't. I didn't mention oh, it here. Oh, so what they did is they sprinkled uh, comments that came up during their public engagement process. Mm -hmm. And incidentally, <laughs> speaking of public engagement, um, they had over fifteen thousand people engaged. Wow. So for us, the equivalent would be about a thousand people if we did it on a per capita. Mm -hmm. or, I mean, on a well, no, it would be less than that. It would be five, 500, well, 500, 1,000 times 20. No, it would be, it'd well, be under that. Anyway, the is, point is they. Their population is about yeah, a little over 10 times. But this is what they did. They had event types, community meetings, things that they called pop-ins, like when you meet with an existing group. That's, a, you know, for example, the Economic Development Committee. <coughs> you go there, present the plan, get their feedback. So we already have done that. But they just have done a really nice job to engage their community. And we did too a few years ago. We're just going to re reinvigorate the process and, and re engage and complete the plan here this summer. I think the lesson to be learned from this is the, is the display of it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. That right. You're the telling people that this is what we have done in order to get to this point. Right. Yeah. And make it easy for people to understand, mm -hmm. you know. So. Mm -hmm. No, I, I like this too. It looks pretty good. So I'm good. glad uh, that uh, you're going that well, way. We're excited to get started tomorrow morning. <laughs> good, <laughs> good. But do we have to be awfully careful? So do we need to take a formal action? Well, yeah, I, I, mm -hmm. I read a lot of plans and a lot of them are plagiarized because, I mean, there's only so many ways to say you want to create healthy, diverse, compact, yeah. complete neighborhoods. Well, In school, you're taught not to do that, but then there's <laughs> imitations. The Cut and paste. From a right. I don't see in this case, uh, you know, using the concept because the material would be very different for Middleton. This also gives us a roadmap and a plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, totally. every week we yeah. know that yeah. every meeting we know that yeah. we're going to be doing something, and I think that'll and help us. And I think that'll yeah. help sure. us get stuff yeah. done. Yeah. I, I write this all the time. Oh yeah. Fine. So I'll just say the thank you as well. Is it just positive online. to this cafe? Very much so. Printed yeah. it like part of it earlier today, but we can no, print you a full no, one. Not, if you no, not you. I mean, can I go to Madison and get a call? Oh, I think it's I just, and also, just online. Just online. If you we could publicize it, yeah, it's just George online, will do it, and the others do. So <laughs> if you want it, so that the people will come. I think it's mostly online. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Anything else? This was just the discussion. We're done. So. Dan, say Move to adjourn. Second. Okay. So, <laughs> all those in favor to adjourn, say aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs>